Hey, what's up, everybody? Hexy and Todd Wardrobe here. We are getting ready to play some GCACW. AKA Wardrobe and Jeffy Poo, AKA Jeff, AKA Hex to Hex. Um, and special guest, Patrick. What's up, sir? Oh, and camera. I'll take uh, GCACW. Well, look at me. For, I'll take GCACW for 800, Patrick. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Still hurts, Jeff. Still hurts a little bit. <laughs> Man, yeah. glad you come on board with me because this one's gonna be funny. Yeah. So um so everybody, we've got the we I, I was able to scrape up $32 and he's willing to come on for 32 and um and here he is. I don't know why I picked 32 dollars. So I don't know why that... 32 bucks will buy lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'll buy that'll buy you lunch, but it won't cover the tip. Okay, so so Patrick, uh, he was on with us last night, and I think he thought, okay, I'm not going to spend all this time typing. I'll just sit here and make my comments live. So I really appreciate you coming on, Patrick, and we'll see how this goes. I, I, I'm pretty tired because I was so fired up after last night's game. I stayed up way too late just kind of thinking about it and doing stuff, and then I'm like blasted tonight. But I've already got energy because we're playing again, and then you said, sure, and he even got more fired up. So you can keep Jeff and I from fighting. What's up, camp? What's up, damn Tim? Charles, of course, is on first one as usual. So he gets the points. He gets the $33 today. I know what I'm talking about. Um, today, um, we are playing the last basic scenario out of all green alike, out of Stonewall Jackson's Way 2 Battles of Bull Run. We uh, This is a pretty good achievement for Jeff and I to go get through all these. So we're pretty excited. Well, we haven't got through it yet, but um, I did. Uh, so this is the last basic scenario, and then you would get to, into the uh, advanced game. But I think Jeff and I are going to go to the next game chronologically for basic game. I think we want to stick with that for now. But I am excited to try a campaign sometime. And then um, and that's that. That's where we stand on that. So this one is three turns. We definitely will not finish it tonight unless something just bizarre happens. And Jeff and I are both tired little boys. So we'll uh, see what we can get through, and we'll – Find another time and finish it up uh, another couple of live streams. Um, and then Patrick popped on the note and said he would join us. So, Patrick, thanks a lot for doing that. Um, and so Patrick's got a channel. I think everyone probably already knows that, but I'll say it anyway. He plays tons of GCACW, tons of uh, – we should probably let you do this, but um, com uh, Commands and Colors Ancients, right? Yeah, and we're Medieval now, yep. Oh, Medieval. And then com uh, Combat Commander, primarily those three. I don't know if you have other stuff. Yes. Maybe maybe the he's going to Trinity, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I have been collecting the Napoleonic CNC, and we'll be playing that probably you know at, later this year. So that, I'm excited about that. Um, anyway, so he does that. He's done a lot of stuff with GCACW. He really knows it. He's got so many videos on it. Some great training videos, some old ones, and then you just recently redid uh, a training scenario, I think, or training uh, video, right? I mean, relatively. Uh, they're in the works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're in the works right now. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, the old ones still work and stuff, but, you know, Patrick's gotten better at videos and he's gotten better at the rules. So, it's, I'm sure it's just going to be even, even better, but they're great intros to it. And so, he's played uh, many of the scenarios, all the, at least the basics. I mean, I know you've played a bunch of other, but anyway, what I'm saying is, and a lot of these basics, he's played it twice with, um, some guys so it's kind of cool because then they'll switch sides and he's played this one um i just was watching it and um it's got a lot of special stuff going on here so it'll be nice to have you on here for that too i mean we're gonna try to do as much as we can on our own but um anywho so he's gonna join us here so let's get the um thanks for joining us patrick we appreciate it yes definitely. of course thank you let's get the uh, get our lovely faces off here 
we might pop those on later let's see here so i want to go single layout and there we go so i will zoom in here in just a minute but i want to get a little bit broader view because my zoom in it can we kind of lose some of the stuff here so um real quick uh so this is called the retreat to washington and i'll do like i did yesterday and just read this even shorter paragraph intro here um so after what seemed to be a good beginning mcdowell's army was finally routed in the afternoon of july 21st 1861 by a combined confederate attack the confederates failed to press their advantage however and the union army retreated into washington nearly unmolested this scenario covers what could have happened if the Confederate Army had been more active in attempting to cut off and destroy the panicked Union Army. Of course, this is all after the battle we just played last night, the battle, first battle of Bull Run. So you can see this is where we were last night playing. In fact, all of our scenarios pretty much have been around here and a little bit to the west. But there's Bull Run there, McLean Ford, Sudley Church, Groveton, Stony Bridge, and all that stuff. So we were kind of doing this, and now you can see they're starting to get out of dodge here so um well i'm sorry get out of uh groverton groveton um so that's that's what we're uh so it's a little bit of a what if um but that's cool too that's fun and we get to so again just like we mentioned last night they're going to introduce us to some rules that are normally only seen the in the advanced uh jeff and i've been playing under the game where you only can go up to four fatigue levels and this one um some people start with six that's what the little black indicators are on here um you can't really see it but there's black indicators showing that you know there's uh, orange some have none reds and all that stuff so that'll be something new for jeff and i to fit, to learn some yeah so there's that and there's i think there's a few other things. oh there's night uh there's rain and there's going to be some things with that so it'll it's a, another again great way to introduce you to some more advanced uh, things that happen in the game and uh, the victory conditions are Ten, so now, then this one, the Confederates gain and lose VP points as opposed to the Union. So the VP, the, the Confederate player gains and loses VPs for the following. They get 10 points if they control either Fairfax Courthouse, here, let me, or Fairfax Station. We have, they get 14 if they control both. And they can gain a maximum of 14 for Fairfax. Okay, all right, never mind. Oh, I see this clarification. Uh, 14 if the Confederate controls only one of the following hexes, Falls Church, Annandale, or Springfield. So those are all pretty much, yeah, they're all blue over here, which is nice. It's kind of a nice thing here. So boom. Jeff, why is this area familiar? So this is the second game that we have played that has a victory location on a town that I lived in. And this is the town... Falls Church is where I grew up from like one from birth till four or five years old. Which is why the Confederates won it, because it's a historic landmark. <laughs> um, um, oh, wait, what? Of course, Fairfax is where my mom worked in the hospital there for years. So, uh, so 20 points if the Confederate player controls exactly two of the following Falls Church, Annandale, Springfield, and 25. If they control all three of those and then plus for one point for each union manpower lost in combat which now jeff this will be funny we've done such a great job of uh killing off union troops let's see if we can yeah. we, probably won't be able, we won't be able to do it this time this is um, the first so yeah anyway retreat or cavalry so any retreats not an extended march first march get blah 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 and then minus one for confederate firepower actually this is of the victory conditions we've experienced so far, these are the easiest to understand. <laughs> I mean, the yeah, yeah, well, in looking through the special rules, I think maybe instead of us trying to traipse our way through that rule, I think that, okay, so so this game is going to start in the action cycle and the union's going to first initiative. So there's no leader transfer phase. But I think we've had, we had one scenario where we had unit, unit, union panic, but it was, it was extremely simple. So, Without us having to read that entire thing, Patrick, can you give us what we're applying for the effects of panic in this one for the union? Uh, yeah, I, I, I was doing the same as you. I was refreshing my memory here. Just I pulled up the uh, the scenario itself. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly. It's 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 been a minute since we played this one. Um, I was just going to point out the fact that turn two is all rain. 
um, that's prescripted. So that's I think that's what you were mentioning, Todd, where that's going to yeah. give you something a little different you haven't done before. So that's yeah. going to be a significant impact on the Confederate movement. Um, I would I'm I'm literally going back through here and just <laughs> looking at the panic stuff myself, but I think it has to do with uh, die roll modifiers for the Union on uh, on attacks. They are at a deficit because of that panic. Um, yeah, I, I, it's going to take me a minute here to just kind of refresh yeah. that, but uh, come yeah. back to me, Teach. Yeah, yeah. All right, so so Jeff, while you're kind of reading that, I'm going to tell people just, I'm just going to read. So some of the special rules. Union panic. Oh, first of all, uh, I think I said hi to damn Tim. Toadie back. What's up? Thanks for joining us. Charles, uh, Joey Saban. Thanks for coming on. You always good to see you on here. It's been a while since I've seen you on a chat. So thank you. Oh, Joey. Um, Jay Arnold. Hey, what's up, Jay? Cool to have you on. Thanks. All right. So um, Union panic. So blah, 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 blah. So we've pan the, the Union has panicked uh, earlier in the day. Uh, so therefore, all the rules apply to a panicked army. So we're looking at the advanced rules 10.4 effects of panic. They apply to all unit, all union units during this scenario. We do not uh, see. So you now, this is what's cool that you do not need to read the entire section 10.0 about morale because that doesn't matter. Only section 10.4, right. so that's cool. Right. Note that some units have already performed retreat marches, which is something we haven't done a whole lot of either, and so are at fatigue level five or six. Oh, I see. So that's how you get that. Um, because the union is panicked on turn one, union units can perform retreat marches on turns one and two only because the unit is panicked on turn one okay so we can do retreat marches on one and two which we're going to learn about that too so this is cool uh jeff said no leader transfers um since this no, scenario leader, no, begins leader, no, no leader transfer phase in turn one on turn, turn one the scenario begins with the action side okay so we're kind of starting in res as they say the kids say nowadays uh, three, turn one, the union player automatically wins the first initiative on turn one. After this point, initiative is determined normally. If you're new to this, uh, Jay, I don't know if you've watched our videos, but you roll initiative after each activation. You'll see that in just a, in, a, in, a, in a minute. Oh, wow. Night on turn one. Yeah, this is a cool one. Like, so, yeah. Patrick, I just basically watched while you guys went through the special rules, and of course, I, you know, none of it stuck. But you know, it's, I, this is not new. If the Confederates had pursued the retreating Union forces, this would have started very late in the day on July 21st. This special rule, this is really fun, restricts both players' ability to attack on turn one accordingly. Players must keep track of how many times the Confederate player gains initiative on turn one. I'll keep track of that, Jeff. After the second time that the Confederate player wins initiative, which the way it goes, it'll be the second time we roll, um, because everyone... Uh, People, uh, Confederates win ties, so there's just there's just more likely that they will win it. After the second time, um, dusk has fallen. Dusk has no effect on gameplay, but signals to both players that night will soon fall. I feel like we're playing a role-playing game here. Ending attacks for this turn. So I would think that's going to speed things up in one way, and it's, I guess it kind of slows it down another way. Uh, once dusk has fallen, attacks can continue. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. This... Dusk has no effect on gameplay, but signals that both in the night will fall soon. Ending, but okay. On once dusk has fallen, attacks can continue as usual until the first subsequent initiative die roll, in it's which a it, which is a, in which a tie roll for initiative occurs. As soon as this tie roll occurs, which with Jeff and I seems to be often, night has fallen. The Confederate player still wins the initiative per usual, but this action and all subsequent turn one actions are under the following restrictions. I'm going to wait till we get to those restrictions till we get to that. And then rain on turn two, and then social rule six. McConnell belongs to both the first and fifth divisions of the scenario. Therefore, Richardson may activate him. Okay, for movement or assault, and Richardson. Okay, so, yeah. So if, you, if we get once, okay. So once night's fallen, if there's if a defender's hex has one infantry unit, you can attack it either by us. An assault. I'm going to insert they are meaning assault and grand assault. Or during march right. action, so there's no you, we cannot conduct combat against a a hex that has one infantry unit in it, a minimum of one infantry unit. But cavalry, on the other hand, can be attacked. But the cavalry, that defending cavalry, is going to get uh, a plus two to his combat die roll. And if a cavalry unit performs a cavalry retreat, you add two to the cavalry retreat die roll. Which okay, so that's very very. 
curious to me because my first instinct when looking at this, since this didn't happen in in his historical, um, the my first instinct to say, okay, well, the only the only ability we're well the only option I think initially we're going to have to catch Union troops and slow them, which I think they're going to be slowed anyhow, is to try to dash cavalry out there to put them in blocking positions. If, you know, doubt they can get there on one, but uh, where they can be slowed down, these these retreating Union units, and then maybe some of these Confederates can get on them. Um, Bull, Bull Run Bridge is destroyed. Place it. Oh, oh, that's on there. So Bull Run Bridge has been destroyed. Okay. That's going to affect us during rain. <clears throat> and hex controlled start. Okay. Okay. I guess I have a question real quick. So I guess are the union. So the union's not trying to exit or do anything like that. I guess I'm just So they're just, they just want to make sure these, these locations don't fall. Right. Well, yeah. Okay. They're, okay. they're ultimately yeah, they're just getting back to those spaces. Yeah. Okay, I, I was thinking initially that where this was kind of like get your counters off the map side of the situation, but not no. Our, we're kind of protect those locations. Um, well, yeah, because okay. they don't want to give up DC because just to the right of False Church is DC. Oh, okay, not too far away. So well, there's the Langley. Yeah, the, dot, the dotted green line there. Yeah, there's Langley. Maybe they could call in the call in some backup. Okay, sorry, wrong time. Um, Okay, I think so. We got the objectives. Um, so, Jeff, you got that Union Panic figured out? Yeah, no. <laughs> I was reading that other thing. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to just skim over to that. So, that to my current thing was throwing me for a 10.4 with a little bit of a loop. And Patrick, at any time, at any time, please feel free to, to cut in and. Anytime. Okay. Yeah, there's a, the shut the there's a little up. bit of a lag on my end, so I'm oh, okay. catching like like a two second delay. Uh, just that means I can curse, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with well, that, that's um, a lot on your channel. Um, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so the first one was the one I mentioned. Uh, it's a negative one to the Union combat rolls across the board, which already sucks. But there you go. Um, and then you can you cannot force march because of that but you get the opportunity to go beyond fatigue level four up to five or six with movement um, as part of the panic retreat marching so uh, so so patrick what'd you say we can't do they the union i'm sorry we're not we the union can't do uh, it, it's 2a there they they cannot force march so in lieu of doing oh, that there it is. okay they instead okay. get to march longer and they have the ability to sort of ignore extended march rolls by they get a really nice minus three on their extended march roll. So, you know, okay. Normally they would. A, yeah. Okay. I got to I got to remember that uh, two second delay there. That'll so I don't step on you. Um, let me um, let me try to come back in and see if that helps. Okay. Yep. I'll look for you. Okay. All right, so uh, um, of the panicked army may perform a retreat march action. This is not an ordinary retreat after combat, but a specific type of march. Unit unit may perform a retreat march as a march action or as part of an activate leader action. If an activate leader action is performed, either all or none, but not some of the units activated must perform the retreat march. So if you choose to do that with a leader, Every unit he activates, they have to conduct the retreat march, or none of them can conduct the retreat march. Okay, so I guess what we need to know is what the retreat march is. Hey Jeff, maybe can you? Hey Jeff, can you turn your camera off so we can just see if that helps? Remember when we were had camp on, we thought maybe if we turned all of our cameras off, but yeah. Okay, and we're not going to be showing anyway. And then when we get back on, we can maybe turn it back on. So, Patrick, are you, you're, you're there. I am. Can you hear me instantaneously? Well, I don't know, Kent. How about right now? <laughs> right now. Yep. Okay. It must be better. <laughs> A little bit. Okay. We'll see. Uh, it depends on how well my jokes land. <laughs> ah, there we go. That's all right. Good. I was just going <laughs> to say the, the most important thing I wanted to know that today was how well jeff hit those golf balls 
Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, so there's only five of us today, and I did manage to lose three quarters. So it wasn't uh, wasn't god-awful ugly, but it wasn't my one handicap type of round, that's for sure. Okay. Okay, good. So um, you had a question about retreat marching. Yeah. We're, we're trying. Okay, so. Okay. Well, first off, with I, okay, I'm getting the picture. Let's I want to let's clarify the effects of fatigue first. So we know that at certain stages, playing with four fatigue levels, that when we move, we're going to hit extended march rolls. Right. So I'm assuming now we've added two new fatigue levels to these guys, and I'm just wondering. Okay, so I'm seeing it says subtract three from its extended march die roll. That's kind of going to save them, isn't it? That's only on the retreat marching, which is uh, if they're going beyond level four out to five and six. Okay. So, so um, that's what the, the, you know, the black markers are for there. Um, so you would still march to fatigue level four. And then at the, the point you've hit that, if you want to keep going, now you're going to say, I want to do a retreat march, which you're still going to get the, you know, the God awful modifiers that the union gets, Plus, but you get to subtract three. So there's a little bit of math there, um, but it's it's meant to kind of, you know, take away the plus one for the union, plus three if they're, you know, at fatigue level four, uh, you know, they would get the, the three additional. So it's going to offset a little bit and give them the ability to go out to fatigue level five and six. All right. So, okay. So a unit that's at fatigue level four right now on the board, looks like I'm looking at... Uh... Uh, Palmer's Cavalry. Uh, what do we got there? I think the rest of these guys are red. They, if you're fatigue level four, the only way you're going to move is by retreat march. Correct. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So, for example, like Porter and uh, or some of these guys, Howard uh, and Wilcox, they're already at six. Right. They're done. They're not going anywhere on day one. Uh, OK. Right. Because they were out at the, at the head of the line on day two. They're going to lose you know, enough that they have the ability to continue marching. Right. Because they're going to lose three and they're going right. to come back to be level three. Yeah. All right. So if you're at four or five, the only thing you can do is retreat march. And it says here, if you act do a leader activation, all the units that he activates, if they're doing a retreat march, they all have to do it or nobody does it. That does sound uh, pretty onerous, but that's, right. the, that's the way it is. All right, let's see. And a retreat march die roll is going to be just the same as anything else? Yes. Or for, movement, for movement. Oh, yeah, we had a question. Todd and I were asking. We had a question before we started, before you came on, and it might help. So, uh, when last night, and it looks like we may end up doing the same thing here, we activate the district leader McDowell, and we decide he's going to he's going to run two divisions that are both infantry, or he's going to set off two divisions. Do the divisions roll separately, or you roll just McDowell, and the divisions get what McDowell rolls for movement? You do, yeah, that you roll him. He's the leader, and he applies okay. it to everybody. Yeah. Okay. So if he rolls a one, there you go. Right. All right. So, so that's the battle assessment here. We've got a bunch of Union soldiers that are panicked. Their fatigue levels are four and up, except for those lovely green guys down there above Longstreet and a couple of yellows to the back end. So, and we're saying that we need to not allow the Confederates to get to Falls Church, Annandale, and Springfield. Or Fairfax right. Court yeah. or Fairfax Station. <laughs> All right, so it sounds yeah. to me like roles are being flipped here in the Union. We need to get these guys into a position to stop. Exactly so. Yeah. Right, yeah. So now, yeah. now all the heavy lifting is on the Confederate side. So a Union, so Confederate VPs are as high as 15. That's still a Union marginal victory. So they can still gain some of these. We don't have to... We can lose a, a little bit of it, um, but not more than 15. Then it becomes a confederate, yeah. if you're looking from the union side of things. So ultimately, um, you, the, e the quote, easiest points for the confederates are going to be here and here. So either one of those or both. So if they get them both, they get 14. That's 
that's it. I mean, they, they've done that. If they can score some manpower losses without losing their own, then they they can play this kind of conservatively here. Uh, if you really want to push it and try to get the, what, the 15, 20, 25, then you can try to get multiples of these. It really just depends on how well the movement goes, um, how much of a fight the union puts up. If they build a bulwark somewhere there along the railroad, they're going to they're going to stop them from doing that. And you have to factor in day two rain, which is going to just suck. And if you've never played with rain before, this is going to be a fun time because all of these Fords are now unfordable. Yeah. So you I mean, need to get them across. You need yeah. to get them across there on day one. Yeah. It's a little gamey because we know it's coming. But it's like, yeah. It yeah. It seems like right. the first thing, just get over those rivers. Oh, no, wait a minute. Right. Yeah. You just said, though, uh, build bulwarks, but. Can we? No. We can't build, right? No, no. I mean, I mean, just metaphorically. Uh, you you oh, want to build no, okay. a line yeah. of, we want of to, unions yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. I got you. I mean, well, uh, try try to stop them at Fairfax Courthouse or the station here, and if not, find a line here that just keeps them away from the big juicy targets. Damn, um, all right, all right. Since we have three turns, will there not be a chance? I don't. I don't have the sequence of play down pat yet. Is there not going to be a chance for them to build anything in the new turns or not? Only the ones that are at fatigue level zero. So, for example, if you uh, leave the 41st New York alone, they will automatically build uh, some Abatis and same with the 4th Michigan here. So if you just leave them alone, don't march them at fatigue level zero, everybody there that's at that point, at the end of turn one, they will start, they will, I think, throw up Abatis immediately. Um, oh, they will not okay. be able to build anything during recovery on turn two because it's raining and turn three doesn't matter. So basically anyone that starts the game with no fatigue, if you leave them alone by the end of the turn one, they will have recovery entrenchments. So basically two guys right now. Yeah. I two mean, guys yeah. right now. Exactly. Uh, three. Um, yeah. You get the one third New Jersey, you know, don't discount them. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I guess it would slow people. Yeah, I guess that, that's maybe not a bad thing. And actually, the some let's see who's in some. Just I'm looking at Centerville. Ooh, Blinker's too strong. I don't want him to. I don't think we want to leave him there. Well, and we've also got Tyler has two two regiments that are green and one that's orange. He's got three. He's got our brigades. He's got three brigades, and he's two hexes away. So he's got his brigades that. Will, okay, so all right, so we know. We need to get over in here, and we need to make sure we stay in front of this. Damn alarms! So we've got yeah. Who, we've who's got playing with Tyler side? Coming. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Side side <laughs> quest. So we've got Tyler's coming in, who has three brigades that can are still effective, pretty much. And then we've got Richardson. Richardson's really only sitting on one brigade. Damn, he's got nothing. Where'd the he's rest got, of them go? These guys got wiped out. Oh, no, he's got one down there below, Davies. So I'm sorry. Tyler has two brigades that are still effective. And uh, Miles, this is not Miles anymore, Richardson. Richardson well, has Blinker and he has Davies. Well, Jeff, and another uh, roadblock here is all these black, all these level six guys, those are all going to be slowing you down on the road. Yeah. I, okay. So, right. So, I mean, I'm looking. So the guys there, whoops, yeah, that's right. They 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 have a clear march path. Here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But these guys here, they're doing they're God's gonna... work right now. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. they're standing right there and they're they're stopping both of these units once they come across. So as long as you can hold out there, uh, you're, you're keeping Longstreet at bay. Yeah, because they can't cross the stone, the Bull Run Bridge. Not, and then I mean, on, they could come across, wall, but yeah, they're gonna you know come across with the purposes of flanking and attacking. But they're also doing a great job just being a, a sticky zock right there. So I, I need to understand that again real quick. We didn't really come across this yesterday, and it's been Jeff. It's been it was actually a month and a half since we played before yesterday. Can they move zock to zock or no? So long. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so it just stops Long you. Street will come here, but it'll stop them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It stops you. Okay, so that's it. Okay, got it. All right. Um, oh boy. So Jeff, let's kind of 
How about the so do we want to keep the guy in Fairfax Courthouse and station, leave them there, and they'll build something at the end of yeah, this? Yeah, let's not touch any of that. Okay. So I'm thinking, okay, well, we, we, we need we, wa we wanted if the longer we can delay the Confederates, farther away from the objectives. So I kind of like, I mean, there there's no victory conditions for retreating the Yanks. From what I saw, right? It's defending those locations. Defending the locations. Yeah. So all right. So we've got well, there, except we've got, that there is the manpower loss and gain thing. Yeah, well, you know, okay. We've got Zoc coverage here. And we've got sock coverage here. Nobody can cross the bridge here. Um, maybe we need to apply something up in here to freeze them out, or maybe in here, so that yeah. they can't skirt around it. So, I, yeah, I think that. Um, so during the rain, if I was watching some two guys play this game, and that wide black road is a little bit better travel in the rain and post well in the rain than. All these other roads, right? A little oh, bit. Those yokels know. Well, I didn't want to say anything. Um, anyway, yeah. but we'll, we'll we'll figure that out. But just know that 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 might that might that's what I'm saying basically, Jeff. Is I think that's probably good. Even just get someone small. Are you thinking we need to activate McDowell to get more guys to make sure because they get this free initiative? Yeah, we yeah. or we need to decide what we're going to leave in Centerville. Do we want to leave? Okay. Okay. Because um, either way, down below, you've got one. Oh, wait a minute. Is it? Um, hold on. Well, maybe, you know, Centerville, I mean, maybe it's not a bad idea to leave Blinker in there and let him build something. And, I mean, that's a that's a major crossroads there. I mean, it's like it's the center of the road. Oh, wait. Um, which, union, which union regiment in this one here is, can, can be controlled by uh, McConnell? So McConnell belongs to the first and the fifth. Okay, perfect. So we can, we can just treat McConnell – you know, for the purpose that he's underneath of Richardson, that will free us up to use Tyler if we want to 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 move some of that infantry up in here to screen. Who who are you to? Oh, McConnell. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So McConnell down here, he can be in the first or the fifth division. Okay. So we just leave him as part of. The, you know, we'll just we'll just use him as if he's under Richardson's command, the fifth, and then that leaves us keys. Well, Key's not going to do it. He's going to, Key's going to go. He's he's not going to do nothing. I don't think. But Tyler can move Shank, and he's got. Um, well, Sherman's not going over, but Shank could be used to get up in here to give a zone of control in this area. I'm sorry. Yeah. In this area. Okay, so you're thinking move. So again, do we want to? Gosh, man, I, I, the only thing I hate about activating McDowell for all of them is it's that one role. But well, and he's only got a range of two, so who the hell else is going to happen? Sherman's not going anywhere. No, that's true. Cavalry's red. He's not doing nothing. Everything in the back end is black or red. So there's yeah, well, that's all we got. Yep. Okay. So am I? Am I understanding that you guys are playing? You're playing this in like just together. And yeah, we're co-op and all together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because one of the, the, as you say, I mean, if you ever go back and watch, you know, uh, one of the things that I'm hearing in this discussion right here is very, in, is very interesting because depending on how the union does that first initiative, then the CSA is going to go, oh, okay. So obviously it's going to, they're either going to chase, they're going to pursue, they're going to try to go for manpower losses, or they're going to say, oh, they're going that way. Well, I'm going this way. So, so not playing a pose, this is going to be kind of cool to see how you guys you know, puzzle it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you guys, yeah, it's like, oh, well, yeah, okay, let's do this. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we're both used to solo play so much anyway. And that was, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's definitely a different. It, it was it was interesting. So I basically watched your two plays of the scenario we just played, the four. Patrick, I watched you too, and that it was just very interesting watching how you attacked it versus how I don't remember what your opponent's name was. How did, um, how did I do? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, Roger, I think you got Roger. you got you got. I don't think I finished the second one, but you you got smushed as the union player. I think in the first game, you're. I love I love hearing you roll, do your dice rolls. Um, oh yeah, and then um, yeah, it's <laughs> hilarious. And then and then Roger, he was doing something pretty un different. Um, in that second playing, you know, cause he had had the experience of playing, you guys had played it. So um, right, I didn't see right. how that, I didn't see how that turned out yet. So, 
Um, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So Jeff, um, let's All get, right. let's get, let's get rolling here. Um, yeah. I'm thinking the first thing we're, we're going to do with Yankee blue is we're going to stay. God, we're going <laughs> to stay what we are. Um, we're going to, we're okay. We're going to stay in Centerville, but I think what we need to do is take Tyler with shank and let's get, oh, God damn, that'll take Sherman out of range. If we do that. All right, we leave. I guess we leave Tyler in there with keys, and we let's activate Shank and get Shank up into here. Okay, and what do you? Because we want we want to block. We want to we want to zock out this approach. You just want to activate Tyler then? It, we don't even need to do that. We just move Shank because Tyler's not going to get any benefit to the role either. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Do it. And here's something to uh, just to mull over on uh, destroyed bridges. When it's a destroyed bridge over a, a minor river like that, it does revert, I believe, to a ford. So that is still crossable in turn one. Not during a rain turn, though. Son of a bitch. <laughs> so that's that's where the Confederate player would be like, oh, okay, and just go, yay, I'll go around this way. Hurrah. So Who in- do we have anybody, though, that can even. Who invited this guy? Yeah, I know. What a, what a bastard! <laughs> we got a uh, man. Unless so, we yeah, take... definitely. What you, what you guys were saying is, you know, you, you probably want to sneak somebody down here to at least thanksters and just have somebody. Yeah, you got to have one hell of a good role, that's for sure. Oh sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll welcome get to it. GCACW there. Yeah, you're right. All right, so let's activate McDowell, and we will affect Richardson and Tyler, and then maybe what we can do is. Oh boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay, well, well, Jeff, real quick. Sorry, I know, we're, I know, everybody, we're talking a lot. I appreciate, it. Um, but this is the fun of it. So, I think if you know what, well, first of all, do you are you cool leaving Blinker in Centerville so he'll Abbotty up in there? Well, see, now this is with with him explaining that bridge that might change the philosophy a little bit. Maybe, but there's a ton of Confederates up there, and I can't. They're not. I can't imagine they're all going to run down to Bullrun Bridge. Well, and they're well, and they're certainly not going to get up on the upper pike up there, you know, unless they get multiple initiatives, and they're already yellow and red too. So, so we may have time. Um, okay, so let all right, let's assess this. What is the fastest approach, not straight at Centerville? And when I say approaches, I'm talking about the railway line down at Bull Run Bridge, or the pike up near Chantilly which there used to be a great game store in Chantilly, by the way, where I bought my three days of Gettysburg many, many moons ago. Yeah, no, I went to a complete strategist, right? It might no. have been. I don't know. Yeah. So we need to I, – I, I'm saying the shortest approach would be for – yeah, Bonham has zero fatigue, and Longstreet and Dr. Jones have zero fatigue. So the, the potential for them to get across Bull Run at the Ford is faster than any of these units up here trying to get to the pike and go around. So instead of we're gonna so that'll give us time. So what we do, I think we activate McDowell. Okay, and, go for it. And, I and we need to get somebody to the south. Yeah, that's cool. I believe in you. All right. So go I'm think I'm for thinking for Richardson. So let's uh here we go. Here comes this painful roll. Remember last night we started this, I rolled a one, so don't get mad at me. With them, and they get a don't minimum. Of two. Don't put it out there. You've done it. God damn. Here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. The universe Christ. was listening. Jeff. Hey, hey, but Dude. it's a minimum two. It's a minimum two. Yeah, minimum two. Oh, Not okay, going to get great. nobody down there, though. All right, so we're going to treat That's awesome. Connell with Davy. So I think what we'll do is we'll take, oh boy, we'll take um, Richardson with Blinker. We ain't going far, that's for sure. So let's take you know, here. Take, we'll take Blanker, fatigue him. God, I hate doing this, but one, two, and what's his name's going with him? All right. So now he's still he can still reach his boys right here with his command. All right. So that leaves us with Shank, Tyler, Keys, Keys. We're not gonna we. I don't think we, okay, so I don't think we do anything else. I don't think we send, I don't think we have to send them north right now because the Confederates aren't going to get there. Okay. Maybe the cavalry does, but 
we can chase cavalry off. Okay. So That's if cool. you put either one of these units on either side of these, then you've completely prevented them from coming across. Right, because they could they could do the one hex move right there, right? Correct. All right, so and they can always move one hex. That's right. Oh, Oscar, there's no Ford right there. I did not see that. The Fords, the Fords are here and here. Yeah, but yeah, the way they're set though, you're slowing them down. Well, you know, yeah, but they can they can cross. Yeah, yeah, and then they can start moving. Yeah, we don't want them to cross, so let's do this. Let's uh, fatigue and go one. Cool. And I'm thinking it's going to take him out of his command range, though, Richardson. Now you, we can worry about that. Well, yeah, next leader transfer phase, we could move Richardson over to McCall's McConnell if we needed to. So you activated well, you activated McDowell, so that means Tyler's going to do something. Well, I, it probably didn't matter because we don't want to give up Centerville with the Confederates sitting right here. I, I was just more concerned that we don't give up a crossing in these. Yeah, areas. yeah, that's cool. Okay, so that that's it. Let's. Uh, I, so that's the free initiative. Okay. And Johnny Reb. That's first one down. Keep Have track. It, Have at it, Missouri boy. Um. Okay. Now, we just spent 45 minutes talking about what we were going to do as a union. Now we got to flip the table. And... <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good point. So uh, let's look at the units here. Radford, Kershaw, and Hampton in that first hex. Oh, man. Great. These are good forces here. Munford, Beauregard, okay. uh, Okay, Stewart's down there, Holmes. It was about to be. Oh, goodness gracious. Wow, these are incredible units here. All right, Jackson. Johnston. So can Johnston activate Longstreet and Dayard Jones, or only Beauregard can do that? Um, yes, he can. He's the district leader, so he can activate everybody. And Beauregard's the same. Beauregard. They're both district leaders. Yes, they're both they're both district okay. leaders. Yep. Okay. Well, we know we're not going to win any victory by fighting the Union where they're sitting. Correct. Yeah. So I'm just looking at some. I'm just looking at train charts here and stuff. Just please hold. Take time. Put on some elevator music. Prohibited, prohibited. Um, all right, yeah. So what do they? They need to get around to those locations there. Yeah, but I mean, we kind of got to get there in force, and I'm trying to figure out how the hell we're going to do that. Well, and so Patrick, does normally the weather just change by a roll, or is it predetermined usually? Oh, usually and, it's a, it's a, a random event every time you check. Okay. So beginning yeah, of turn, you do a random event. It's raining. Yeah, this is kind of gamey, but I think it, it's, I mean, it's fine. We're going to play, the, we're playing the game, so we're going to game this out. So I really, I guess what I really want to do, since I know this is happening, I want to get as much of these units over here, <laughs> over. And then, yeah, I mean, obviously we want to get these guys over there too, but. Uh, let's see. And the Even command range. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, let's see. I, mean, I haven't even looked at the comments. Um, I'm looking at, you go ahead and. Evaluate. There's, a lot, there's a lot going on here. And no one can command the cavalry, right? They just kind of do their own thing. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no Stuart coordinating all of them. Stuart. All I right, mean, there well, is Stuart, but he's not a cavalry leader. Yeah. And there's no limitation to the number of units a Beauregard can command. He can just say everyone within two hexes except for the cavalry. Is that accurate? That's correct. That's correct. Uh, I'm going to double check that just because I know there were some specific little limitations, but go back. It's I think it's right at the very beginning of, let's see, activate leader. A Confederate can do up to three units, three infantry units. Yeah. 
And, oh, yeah, I mean, we, we were doing that out in the valley with Beauregard, or Johnson, remember? Yeah. No, three, yeah. three units. Yeah. And Union District is only two infantry maximum. Well, okay, so they could get like all the these uh well, I mean, Union Army. District. So that so means yeah, one, one, one of the uh, uh two units in their district, two units maximum. So right, one of he, these but we have a doubt. Right. But that's that's uh Union district leader, yeah, that's what McDowell is. So it's a maximum of two for him. Wait, wait, right, wait a minute. Two. Okay, so if McDowell's going to activate individual units, it's only two. But he activated. We activated two divisions. Right. So you, you did so three. So two either units. way. This one, this one. Yeah. Okay. 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 Two markers. So one of those guys will have to go back. Oh, so he can't pass the orders down to the division commanders is what I thought was happening there. No, he's he's actually, he's like superseding them. He's sending out a general order oh. and he's activating them directly. Oh, shoot. Then we did that wrong. Oh, I wow. I thought he could activate the whole uh, or tell those division commanders and they in turn activate. I did not realize that. So I guess we'll take yeah. uh, the division. The division leaders, which is like keys and all them can do up to four. But they all have to be from their own division. So also oh, Richardson maybe we, can do like yeah. up to four. We should have just since we weren't moving Shank or we weren't going to move any of Tyler's, we should have just activated Richardson. Right. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. And then put McConnell back and then move Davies there. There. Well, McConnell could be attached to either first or fifth. Oh, okay. Well, then that, yeah. Okay, that works. Yeah, so, okay, so, all right, so since we weren't aware of that, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fatigue yeah. him because this is what we would have done. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and we would have we would have done Richardson instead of McDowell since we weren't moving any okay. of Tyler's down. That works. So, District can do two infantry. I'm sorry, I'm making a note here. Beauregard can do three, and Johnson can do three. Union can right. only do two. <laughs> okay. Uh, District three. But the division leaders, which are all these other guys for the, they can do four. Division leaders. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we've had a scenario where we had that many brigades in a division. Oh, wait. No, these glories are all... Like what's Richardson? Division. Is he's a division, division leader? Yeah. Okay. We got a lot to learn. Okay. Um. Yeah, he took over for miles. Man. So this this is an this one's unusual because since it's early in the war, everything's kind of brigades, and we're seeing the mass of units under the divisions. Once you get up to the core level, that's pretty much everything from 1862 forward. It it's a little more fluid. It's a little bit you know we see a lot of divisions and and core leaders so it's a little easier to understand okay i'm going to um gosh i'm going to stick with what i want to do here i got to get these guys across these fords i, I know what's coming I, I i can feel it in my my creaky bones beauregard says the rains are coming and so i'm going to get across here so i'm going to command beauregard's going to command early early cook and yule to get across these fords at a minimum. Um, ultimately, the goal being to... Golly, man, the road structure around here sucks, too. Um, <laughs> what are the... Um, That's every video that we've ever done. The roads suck, man. <laughs> Why aren't they building roads? Um, I thought the guy said where we're going, we don't need roads. Okay, so... What happens to the stream? These little the light the streams here in the rain are they uncrossable now? Or they when will the become Im impassable. Yeah. Oh yeah, my be gosh! Man. Without a road, so <sighs> that will over that will overrule the minimum one hex. Hmm. <laughs> Jeff, who said we play to, this game? Why are we playing this? You got to push hard, there, bub. Bub. You need so we need to get combat forces. Yeah, all right. I'm doing, I'm doing what I said. I'm going to push this across. We got 
Unfortunately, we have three units in uh, across Stony Bridge here, so that's going to cost us an extra one to move across, but that's okay. It's what it is, is what it is. Um, Regiments, too. Kershaw's been reduced to a regiment. Hampton's Legion, which really was never more than that, anyhow. I. Now, the cool thing is there's no, like, restriction on the map. We can go all over the place, but, man, I'm just looking at the road system, like, how we might want to get up there. Well, we know, you know that Let's Beauregard's been a 1D6. railroad is, is. What's that? I said the unfinished railroad is handy, too. It's It acts like a regular road. Yeah. Oh, it does? Where is that on the terrain chart? Oh, man. Well, Beauregard gets a 1d6 plus one. All right, here we go. Beauregard. Four. So, early, cook, and Yule. And just for general knowledge, historically, it's because of early and Yule arriving on the Union right flank late in the day or in the afternoon on the 21st is what caused this panic. Uh, so what do, I'm not seeing uh, unfinished railroad on the terrain chart here. So what does it do for me? It's treated like a regular railroad. It's just you can't so just rail move movement. across it, but you can use it as a road. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, that's cool. I don't. We certainly weren't doing that in the previous games. Okay, so uh, so early and cook. I said from here. So here goes early. He's going to fatigue out. Do you roll for extended march before you move? Typically, yeah, that that may influence your decision on where to put them. All right, rolling for that, and any uh, let me roll two, so he's probably fine. But any modifiers is he okay? Uh, all green alike has some modifier plus one. Yeah, so so he's, he's fine. Plus okay. one, and he's plus one for going to four, right? So that he's plus two. So he, yeah, he's all right. Okay. One. All right, we're going. Two. Three. Four. God, that sucks for the Confederates because he's now fatigued four. He's done. Yep. It sure does, Jeff. It sure does. <laughs> so he's three. Come on, buddy. Nice and low. Uh crappy poo so it's six for sure yep but it just flips him okay so he's now uh disorganized mm -hmm. no yes yeah, yeah the, i was telling jeff well here hold on let me i might have said that. i don't know were we live when we said this okay um one two three Oh, shoot. Beauregard needs to travel. No, I guess, no, he can stay back there, right? Yeah. <coughs> he does not have to travel. See, a district leader can move with a divisional leader, but a divisional leader cannot move with a district leader. If I remember right in the AGA thing, whatever. Hmm. So should I have moved? Well, what I'm saying is you activated Beauregard. So if he moves with those units, um, well, they don't have any division leaders on the better side. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know if he'd want to do that because there's so much to command down there still. I'm going to keep him there. Yeah, he's the traffic cop. Yep. Yeah. One. So that's going to be two, three. Oh man, I do not like what I'm doing here, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Well, we get, we're not. If we do, if we don't. We're not going to get any points. Here we go. Good choice. Oh, Confederate. That's their second one. Dust. And, uh, and you will head an extended march. Oh, yep. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't fatigue him out either. I don't think. So that means he gets a plus two. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so that would be so he just goes flips over 
I was telling Jeff, I think what I need to do is I've only played on Vassal. I kind of need to get like maybe go replay some of these first three or four scenarios that are smaller and a little easier and actually use the boards and the counters with the markers and do my own recovery. Cause I, I, I kind of have that stuff's not solid in my mind to the different levels and all that, yeah. like, yeah. like disorganized, demoralized and all that stuff. You're dealing with the North. I'll deal. I'll take this and I'm going to deal with Johnston in the South. All right. Anyway. So there you go, Jeff, uh, confer, right. get it. It's now dusk. The first tie will be night. All right. So I'm going to take, I'm going to go down with Johnston. I'm going to activate all three of those sitting down next to him sounds lovely four five all right beautiful look at that i can never remember if it there's a withdrawal Wait, it's a plus one call? is uh, for, it's plus one because you're leaving his zock yeah zock okay all right um a no. four is not an extra movement point no nope interesting okay so we're going to go here with um since there's no objectives over here for the union to to get after we're going to take bonham yeah in that way movement is not too bad in some ways like creeks and fords two, are nice three normally four. Oh, hold on jeffy yeah it wouldn't matter five. Oh boy yeah <laughs> well if they get another active and joss is going to have to go with him so all right and then long street and dr jones Let's take let's let's little let's little Jimmy do his thing. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll leave Dr. Jones sitting right there. Johnson can still reach him. Initiative. Johnny Red. There just to keep them honest, or yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, because they move away, then he moves across. He's going to move across, so that'll at least keep them to freeze. Gotcha, 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 good. Gotcha. Okay, then good. That's good. Roll it. I did. It's a it's a Confederates again. So maybe we ought to. Why we have a chance? Let's do Johnston again. Yeah, get him across. Yeah. So let's go. Did you fatigue all those guys? Did you do all that? Yeah, I did that as I was going. They were they were fresh. Okay. Because Longstreet didn't participate. Yeah. Okay. Roll nice and high, Jeff. Four. Mm. That's not bad. Fatigue. Only a second level fatigue. So one. Oh, this could be interesting. Yeah, we got to go. We got to go hard. Two, but you know what I think I want to do is three. I don't see anybody. Now, then nobody's going to get down there. There's no way Richardson's going to reach there. So I'm going to only move him three. And then I'm going to take Long Street. And I'm going to go. Johnson's going with him. One, two, three. What did I say? It was now only rolled four. Yeah, I, I go, why wouldn't you move? Why wouldn't you move Bonham up? Yeah, I might as well. Yeah, well, move Bonham up. One, two, three. Yeah, you're right. Good, good call. I was going to try to stack them, so I mean, I would have had to have left them one back. So mm. we'll not go with Long Street. Now, Dr. Jones. You leaving uh, Dr. Jones there for the time? Do I need to now? Probably don't need to now. No, nope, you're right. Let's get him. Uh, now he's he's going to be out of command, but well, yeah, but he, well, he's out of command regardless. Yeah. Okay. So he would be oh, yeah. One. yeah. This shoot. Well, he'll just have to go individually. Two, three. If he, oh no, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Oof. All right. Well, we've got two fairly strong units across. Okay. And there really ain't much sitting in freaking. Yeah, but we're not going to be able to attack here in a minute. No, oh, we have to roll a tie, don't we? Before yep. it turns tonight. Oh, yep. boy. Now, just, you, we won't, you'll be fine. We're not going to roll a tie for a long time. Okay, thank you. See? Union. I did the last Union bat, so you do this one. So now those two units are free down there. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. Um... Oh, I noticed in so command is two hexes. I I think yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, so let's see. I'm I'm just gonna look at some of the so Richardson is those guys. Uh, yeah, so Davies can only be activated by himself, but McConnell can be activated by Richardson. Mm. Man, 
I need a really good roll for him. They don't get any plus one on their command rolls, right? And I'm going to step off in the bushes for a second. <laughs> <laughs> nope, they just get the minimum of D6, minimum two. Oh, that's so funny. One, two, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to act, activate Richardson, who will activate um, McConnell as well. Yeah, okay, I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll a five. Six works. Six really works. And I can't leave. I can't. Um okay, never mind. I'm just okay, here we go. Uh so I will have a leader transfer phase at the next turn. Yes. And how many hexes is it? Up ten? to ten. Do zones yeah. of control block that and stuff? No, not in the leader transfer phase. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Okay, hold on. Can I un... I gotta... This is gonna really screw things up here. He had to stop when he moved to that 4819. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's fine. That, that's okay. Okay. And then one, two, three, four. Five. So. Yeah, go ahead. You can always. Uh, I, I like to stick like glue because unless you think they're going to attack with. Uh, with a smaller ratio, which is possible. I mean, he, he does have a two command, so it depends on how frisky Johnson wants to be. But at the same time, it also, uh, you know, they have no cannon. So you have that kind of going in your favor. But it also provides, you know, a plus one to him trying to leave. So it slows him down a little bit, you know. Yeah. I call it shadow boxing. Yeah, and he's not going to do any good up there. So, okay. Well, I guess that I could also do force marching, which we just, we never remember to do that. <laughs> um, well, wait, can they force can march now? We're, we're in, no, no, we're in panic. Oh, we're so. panicked mode. Yeah. Okay. Right. And that's the whole army. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I did not fatigue them. This is the thing Jeff and I forget often. So, fatigue, he's fine. He doesn't need to do, but this guy, McConnell, will have to do something. Well, I mean, maybe. Guess what I failed to do last night during all of our excitement? Uh, go to the bathroom? Take my pills. Oh, really? Yeah, so I just took Saturday's pills on Sunday night. I'm glad you didn't croak on us. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at that. Union. So, Jeff, I moved. Uh... I see that. Okay, so union Union's up. What do you want to do? Well, I'm gonna so they're sitting at, what, yellow and... You want to get Davies moving? Well, let me ask you this. Do we want to get Davies moving or do we want to get Blinker? Whoops. Blinker right there. Or right there. I mean, is Davies under any threat right now? No. Um, how about... Up north, do we see anything going on up there that we want to react to? Or well, early's done. Ep Yule is done. Uh, Cook still has one more effort. Oh yeah, there you go. Yep, thanks. Good, good catch there. No, I think we need to. There's no threat yet in the middle. Yet it's coming, just not yet. Okay, they're okay. already across the ford down here. Davies, Davies. I don't think Davies is any any immediate threat, but I think that Fairfax Station is. So <sighs> well, that's true. So do Richardson again and get those two guys up there. Just keep them moving up. Yay. All right. So we're gonna go. Oops. Fatigue him. 
Well, extended March. All right. So if one, oh yeah, extended March, my bad. Two, he's good. Okay. All right. One hex move right there. Bam. Or do we go? No, because he can't. There, he, he wouldn't be able to do it. All right. We're going to do the same thing with. Um, actually, do we keep even in mind if, if he does that? If he does that from here to here, he is going to flip, disorganize because he's going from Zock to Zock. Oh my gosh, we never did that. <laughs> oh, there's a new one. That's a new one on us. And if I didn't, he would go one, two. He wouldn't be able to get in there. Exactly. So great, you know, risk reward there as far as making him weaker, but you're getting in his face. Yeah, I, I think we kind of have to yep. keep him one hex further out. So, so disorganize him. Um, yeah. Now is that Zock to Zock? What if it's Zock to Zock on a road? Still the same thing? No, no. It's because he's going off road. Oh, so, okay. So McConnell and, would be fine. Uh, did was that two his extended march? Yeah, I rolled his extended. Oh, yeah, I rolled a two. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So he's good. All right. Um, I don't know if McConnell needs to go anywhere. Or not. He's still in command. No reason to burn that fatigue up in case we need it for something else. Okay, that's fine. Good. I nice ship hit. Yankee boys. Dang. So now go ahead and deal with Davies, I guess. Yanks are. Okay. Yeah, Davies wants to get he wants to play too. So we're gonna roll. I'm gonna this time I'm gonna roll uh four or five. <laughs> Good job. Divided by what? Four or five? <laughs> <laughs> that that's hurtful <laughs> minimum of two one two. no 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 for, for him he's he's by himself he doesn't have a leader activation he's just a minimum he gets his regular d6 oh but he doesn't get a minimum I of think, two i'm i'm double checking that uh I'm usa yeah USA. it's just one d6 yep yep oh sure is good call Mm. Well, you only go one direction. You know why go behind him? Well, I yeah, with that two, I was going to get him over into forty four twenty. But I mean, sure. Oh no, okay, yeah, no, I see. Yeah, but aren't those? What if he gets stuck there? <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> like we're going to we're going to go bad. We're going to go all the way up there. Did so you? Gonna... Oh, bam! He's good. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. And here we go. Yeah, yeah, confeds. And I was still not a tie yet, right? Nope. Yeah, it's shocking. All right. Beauregard or DR Jones. Boy, man, we got a lot of guys to get across this. Yeah, this we do need to get DR water. Jones moving. We're, I, I'm just so, we're going to pop night. And I just keep wondering to myself, do we need to? What does night do for anything? No, No attacking at all. If there's an infantry okay. unit there, that, right, that, so, the main, that's really much the only restriction. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm wondering here. Now, you, let me throw this out there. We activate Johnston with the intent of Bonham and maybe Longstreet. We transfer Johnston to Bonham. And we attack Richardson because he's disorganized. Oh, look at you. We got to do one combat tonight. Would be right if we didn't. Okay, do it. All right. So we're going to activate. There is no reason not to. None. Zero. All right. So we're going to activate Johnston with Bonham and Longstreet. And we're going to move, we're going to transfer Johnston to Bonham. And he gets a two, three. Let me just zoom in here. All right. So with that, th where's my charts? Where are my charts? Honey, you know, where are my charts? You know what? If he does an assault. So so here's here's a thought. Okay. Uh, let's just think about this all the way through. Since you're activating both Longstreet and Bonham, and you got a, a not great roll, 
you could, if you wanted to, do that transfer to Johnson there, then move Longstreet here, and then you can attack McConnell. Oh, and flank. Get a plus two flank. flank. Wait, okay. So what I was thinking was is as close to Fairfax Station as we can while those units are weak in there. Yes, but you also score manpower losses potentially on McConnell and push him back. Yeah, not a good point. Too. Um, and you've and got you gotta, you've got a plus two tactical here, um, and uh, yeah, I mean you don't have enough for a ratio bonus on Richardson, and he's a one right. versus two. All right, good call. Good so call. here, so this is a little bit softer target. Okay, I see what you're saying. So okay, all right. So we take fatigue him. He's going to move here, extended. Five, son of a bitch. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because he's there, right? Right. Yeah. He, all right. So, okay. And then we assault McConnell. You, you're with, attacking You're attacking on the march with Johnson. With Johnson. Oh, and you can still get the flank bonus on. Yeah, Jeff and right, I, I think we right. didn't really understand that concept. Well, uh, Bonham right. didn't move. Why don't, would an assault give us a plus one if we did that? Well, you've already you've already done a movement roll, so you can't just now assault. Oh, that's yeah. I'm sorry. You're right. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Okay. He's marching. All right. So, okay. Well, let's do it. Let's do one on the march. Where's my chart? One on the march. We don't have to check for anything. He's got the movement points to do it. So, all right. So that's going to be he can burn two. Normal. So that's going to be oh. um, that'll wash any negative. I need to get my chart out, my my whiteboard. Get your whiteboard, Todd. Okay, got it. All right, and we've got the ratio is going to be a wash of seven to six. So okay, I'll put on that. So let's go down the list. Flank attack. You said it was a plus two, Patrick. What's plus two. Yep. Okay. Ops. Okay. All right. Plus two. So we got a plus two for the attacker. Um. One to one. Our Oh, the third number is the right, artillery, you see, right? Yeah, you're going to lose one on artillery. Yeah, so minus one for the attack. Okay. All right, um, we okay. don't have a flank refuse. It's not an assault action. Tactical modifier, oh, well, Mr. Johnston is Plus a four. Two. Or two. No, yeah, so there's a, a two. two. Yeah. yeah. So that's a plus two? So we're at a so we're I at see a plus three. four up and one down. Yep. Yep. All right, here we go. Dun dun dun. Oh yeah, five to five to two. You said one down, right? Uh, oh no no no. Yeah, no. Well, which one? Are you doing it? Yeah. Are you are you doing attacker defender? No. Yeah. No. Well, you're, you're doing union confederate. So it was plus four, right? No, it was plus three, but he's asking. We usually use the blue die as the union and the red die as. Oh, okay, right, yeah. So it's right. it's three to four. So you got a you've got a plus one. He he repel he repulsed you. Wait 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 wait. Give me those. Okay, so we rolled a three and a one. And what right. were the pluses you, for the he, attacker? So I like three. to put everything on this one side of the equation. So I you have plus three is your net modifier for the Confederates. So yep. then you have three and you're four with the Confederate. So it's just a plus one, six uh, ratio or. Okay. Result. Okay. 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 All right. So we got a plus one on a six defender is a big D yeah. and a plus one on a seven attacker. Oh, Jesus Christ. Todd Reed is a one. <laughs> we we go. gotta attack something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. But it was a good attack. Your... You just rolled a yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to decrease his manpower, and he's going to be disorganized. All right, and Big D is disorganized, and they all fatigue out. Okay, so now here, here comes so now we take the fatigues past four. No, that's only for the union. Just right. So, I, but I'm saying McConnell will go past four. Oh yes. The big D yes, is three. Right. Yeah. Oh wait a minute. Did he? Right. Yeah, it's fatigue of three. Right. One. Yep. Right. Oh, what's the command key, Jeff? Control Q two. So now he's now at six. Oof. And big boy down here is he's just going to be red. 
All right. Todd, did you mark that strength point off? I did to the Confederates minus one. Damn it. Damn it. Who's that, Joe? Damn it, Joe. All right, initiative. Oh. Boom. 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 So we're not going to be attacking any. We got it in just in time. Yeah, we got an attack in. That's good. Yeah, that's true. I'm sorry. I'm saving the game. <laughs> I hadn't done that yet. And that's not good. Chuck, are you talking miniatures painting in this prestigious Hex Encounter stream? All right, so right, Johnny Ribs Initiative, why don't you do whatever you're going to do up north? I still see a couple of yellow units there, or orange units. See some cavalry. Oh, yeah, these guys can't do anything anyway. Um, The good thing is you have a bridge there, whereas D.R. Jones, he's the one that really needs to get yeah, oh, he's going. forgetting about him. I'm gonna roll for Jones. Yeah, good idea. Good job. Now, do Confederates without commanders get anything, or is it? Uh, they're uh, minimum, D6. or they're just one d six. Yeah, uh, minimum two. Minimum two. Two, three, four. Did um, you get the him? I am now. Okay. Union. Mm. Well, everybody's pretty much wiped out over here. And we don't want to touch the ones in the stations. So the only person left to maneuver is Davies. And now Davies can now be activated by Tyler because he's within Tyler's command range. Oh, no, no, sorry. Wrong person. I mean, Shanks don't. Uh, maybe you don't want Trink to go to red, but Shink can move, do something too. But I guess maybe you don't want to separate them. No, we don't need to give up Centerville just yet. And now that it's nighttime, so Davies looks to me like the only one that we need to do something with. All right. Roll. Oh, yeah. Extended. Three plus two is five, so it's less less than or equal to five. He's good, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. All right. So four. Damn, he can't. Well, no, he only gets one, three, three, four. Ooh, ooh. See now, now we could have gone. Now he's got Damn some it. possibilities. Three, four. That's one option. If he goes this way, it's going to be one, two, three. You're really not going to do anything else. But he gets four movement. Yeah. But he would only he he could get to here. He can here, also here. go overland three, three to go there, and then one more with the stream. Yeah, streams don't do anything. Yeah, yeah. For now. Yeah, My, yeah, so yeah. Well, and either way, he's okay. So we can either get him here. Or we can get him here, here, or here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do we want to do with the multiple? Well, his basically. commander is over here. Yeah, he's way the heck over there. So we probably just want to try to do what we can to get him across. Like maybe get him up into forty-five nineteen. No, that would be it. No, yeah. No, he can't do that. No. Yeah. Because he has to go through. I mean, that, if you um, if you want to if you want to bite the catch the tiger by the tail, you can set up a flank on Long Street yeah, here. That, yeah, and that's what I that was my intention. I already fatigued him, I've already rolled for extended. So I was gonna go one, two, three, four. Now okay. we create a little havoc for the Confederates over here. Just I, I think Patrick can talk. I think you could have just jumped over to forty four twenty for three points and he then one. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. just so you know. I mean it doesn't matter, but but he wanted to take the scenic route. Yeah, I no, I get it. I want to see what was on the other side oh, of Wilmer McLean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Wilbur? I'm moving. <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, Johnny Reb. Interesting. Do 
And what uh, I love I about another... Green Alike is that the Johnston is out of command radius with DR Jones because McConnell cuts him off. Also, yeah. stock does affect command range, just not transfer. Exactly. Well, no, it, it affects it. Like he can't transfer like on the fly here, but during the leader transfer phase, yeah, he could. He can go up to ten, but he could ostensibly just go right through there to right to Dr. Jones. But All right, but he can't. The action cycle, the, he, can. he can't command Longstreet or Dr. Jones. Correct. So we only get one. Ooh, still. So if let's say Dr. Jones got activated, God, I don't know. Uh, well, he does have an effectiveness of one. This do, do friendly troops um, negate zone of control for command and all that? Sadly, no. What? If so Dr. Jones was. activated, I know it's, moved, fu it's funny, and moved here. And then attacked if he had enough movement points, and then attacked on the move here. Do we have a flanking bonus from Longstreet from Union Mills? Oh, we yes. can't attack it's nighttime. Yeah, it's nighttime. But, right, right, right. Uh, so okay. Whatever's whatever's going to happen is potentially day two or three at this point. Yeah, Todd, I think you need to maneuver some northern units, buddy. All right, thanks, buddy. Um, I'm going to move. Um, I think I'm going to activate Beauregard and activate Jackson, Holmes, and Hunton. Well, we got, I'm looking at 22 people watching this thing. So better, better make a good decision. Do it, Beauregard. Four. Uh, Ptolemaicus, the cardboard. Are you bringing this discussion over from the Gamers with Coffee discussion? Because this is all cardboard on the computer. So it's five movement. So hunting is going to go increase fatigue to three. So he has six to March. One, we're good. Charles, I will almost agree with you on that pretty much, about 99%. Let's see if we've been missing while you're dilly dallying. Uh, let's see. Come on, Yankees, Chuck, from California. The California column, Chuck. Let's see. Yeah, I missed mine last night, Charles, with all the excitement of us fighting the Battle of Bull Run. Hmm. Man. I have to think about where we want to put Beauregard after all this. Um, when you're looking at strength points when moving, is it their original fire, uh, manpower or the, what they are in disorganized? Uh, it's their manpower. <laughs> so these guys uh, oh, wait, I get I get this wrong every time. Uh, it's for moving into its combat value. Okay, so if they're down Extended to one, it's one. Their original. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Jackson will fatigue to red he's going to roll nice and low he did roll a nice and low one he gets five movement one two three um so right here this is not a bridge so is that going to be a problem crossing in the rain no that's that's considered a little little road route bridge okay is it anywhere any even the thin black lines count as bridges yeah like the, they're fine okay nordic maelstrom what's what's 60 dollars less one two three four five one um movement is that a remake for freaking musket and pike a reprint already Yeah, you know, I kind of wondered, this. did these Yankees get off the side of the road and let all those civilians race back to D.C.? <laughs> okay, done. Initiative. 
Confeds. Northern Force. You, you got you to push. Push. Come on, PGT. Forgot to do that. Man, rolled three ones for extended marches. Um, God, day two is going to suck. Beauregard um, got it himself is, out of command. It's going to suck. <laughs> Just, yes, yes, it is. It will suck. All right, I guess. Mm, mm. Well, all right, all right, this is a question. Okay, let me see. What these cavalry guys? We want to get these guys cranking up and moving ahead. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. So we got Stewart's going to roll. And we still got Cook and Epa Hunton can still. Well, that's what I want to ask that question to Patrick because I don't think I have a good grasp of that. So just a second. Stuart rolled a four and a What's five. That? Yeah, let me do this and then I'll ask the question. So, so, so Cavalry get a 2D plus one. Mm -hmm. Nine, ten. Do they also impacted by the manpower strength in their sets? So oh, no, actually. No, cavalry never affected by infantry and vice versa. And damn, Stuart, that's a good roll. One. Two. Three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. And do they extend March to? Yes. Okay, my question here, um, Patrick, this is kind of a so on these guys here, these orange guys hunting and cook. So, and again, because I don't have a good grasp on recovery and all that after each day. I mean, so if we're looking at this turn, is it, oh, like, since we have such uh, limited time, is it just good to go ahead and push them to red? Or do you sometimes want to keep them orange so that they there's better recovery? That's I'm, I'm not quite clear on what, I guess, is more of a strategy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unless you have a need to get them somewhere right now, which I don't think so. I think it's better to give them that extra, you know, little fresh fatigue uh, on the next day because it's, they're going to be moving slow anyway because of the rain. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't take them before. I mean, yeah, I, I guess the thing I'm also thinking is like, they're not going to gain much here. I mean, I guess unless I roll a six for both of them, I don't know. So, okay. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So now it's initiative and it's a uh, confeds Jeff. What do you want to do? I don't, Oh, I guess we could move Munford. Yeah. The yeah. cavalry's really moving. If we don't want to, and okay. we got you got Kershaw and Radford. Radford's Radford's cavalry. Yeah. Kershaw's only yellow. What do we want to do with cavalry? Do we so my thinking with Stuart was, you know, oh, you know what? I shouldn't have gone there. Oh no, that's fine. I was just trying to get them ahead, you know. Well, we get would clear out all your cavalry and get them to where they're gonna serve a purpose tomorrow, hopefully. Well, I guess I'm not I, I need a little <laughs> I'm trying to understand again what the benefits of cavalry. Like, where should they move? Do you think? Well, we need to get them to block any move. Okay, so all right. So look, we've got, we've got objective, 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 objective. Yeah. So they kind of want to try to skirt around all those guys, right? To slow them down. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, okay, well, I, let me let me let me ask this floss this thing here. If we were able to, if we took a cavalry unit. Yeah, I guess it's, I mean, okay, so let's say we had a cavalry unit and we, we moved, a, we were able to move a cavalry unit um, right here. And we decided for McDowell or these units in here, we were going to move them. With, if any one of those units attempts to move, even if it's away, does it trigger the potential for cavalry retreat or do they have to be moving into the cavalry? Nope. As soon as they activate adjacent, they have the option right. to cavalry retreat. Uh, right. so well, I think the cavalry can do the best for us in a place like here. 
Uh, okay, so Stuart maybe yeah. should have gone up next to him, but that's okay. Well, you still got two more to move. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's. Um, I'm just going to move the. Let's. I'm going to roll for Radford then. Three. That's fine because one thing they can do plus one. So four. Okay, that's fine. I know. So let's see here. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do this. So fatigue. I'm sorry. Do they roll for extended march or not? They do. Because they're going oh. to three. Uh oh. Oh no. They're, they're gone. They're gone. Yeah. No right. Good. I didn't want to mess with them anyway. All right. So they <laughs> man, they go are... to. Oh wait, that doesn't count as manpower loss, though, does it? No, it does not. It, no, it doesn't. So is there a way to? Is there a you just right click or... and delete them? No. Oh. Or if you want to do like we did before, drag him off and sit him somewhere so we can display our. No, I'm going to do what Patrick said. Boom. Ty. So I'm going to try Kershaw now. Since I did such a good job with the other guy. Or the other cavalry. Come on, buddy. You got Munford still. Okay. Well, so, all right. Oh, my God. Freaking kidding me? Well, they're not disorganized, so I guess I should maybe stop leading the. Oh shoot, not Kershaw! What the heck? You just killed another cavalry. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> I mean, who, who, who needs Stewart to get lost going to Gettysburg? We got Todd. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I mean, technically, they were really good wagons that he captured. I mean, so there was that. All right, Union, you do something. You do something, Jeff. You're so good. Okay, Union, we are going to. We are going to. Oh, this could be major. Pass. Whoa. <laughs> we don't do that very often. I mean, I mean, we could. Nordic, we don't need comments from you, bro. I don't want to retreat march nobody because we know Stewart's not going any farther. And the rain's going to slow everything down tomorrow. So the more recovery these Yanks can get. And, and you don't have to do anything but not let him get points. So, yeah. good call. Pass. <laughs> Initiative. Um, Yanks. Uh-oh. Two passes in a row. Oh, wait. If you, pass, if you pass Initiative, automatically goes to the other side, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't even Oh. Do that. Okay. So Jeff, I think maybe Kershaw can move up into forty-two eighteen. Yeah, let me get uh, let me get him across that river here. I'm only going to move him one hex, but we'll roll anyhow. All right. One. Are you? No, one two. Yeah. Are you transferring Beauregard by any chance? Or. Is he still sitting down there by himself? No, I mean, no, he's with, yeah, he's with these guys back here. We can't do that, can we? Well, yeah, you can train. Kershaw started here. So oh, because he was of... within range. Yeah, it's a good point. So we probably should have, yeah, but we would have transferred Beauregard to here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You would have, so you would have activated a leader, right? Beauregard. Right. So you, you activate Kershaw with Beauregard, transfer to him, and then he rides with him. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. And plus, he would have got well, it wouldn't have mattered. One, two, well, he could have moved to there. One, two, three. Well, no, that's I don't like that idea. I guess my only thinking there is now you've left those troops back there without a leader. Yeah, uh, well, that was so, so. This is what I'm asking Did he have to go? No, he did not. So you can transfer. From two here, and then he can stay right. with Jackson if he wants. That's, okay. Okay. All right. We just need to transfer him to the location before we did the movement. Correct. Yeah. Right. Great. And what'd you roll for movement, Jeff? Two. Well, well you we activated a leader, so th three. three. We're, we're only moving one hex. Why well, stick a two up there against these guys by himself? Well, I'm thinking because he can slow him down when they go to leave, it's going to cost him an extra point to leave. Zone of control, yeah, yeah, it's a good call. It could also 
open I mean, them up. But the fact that they passed means that he's probably not going to move them. So yeah, you know. yeah. But do you, I guess I'm thinking of the next turn, just getting them ready for the next turn. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always good. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't hurt. I mean, yeah, if they attack him, but they're not doing that. They got to get back. They're not gonna. I mean, that's what I would be thinking as the Confederate. Yeah. Anyway. Johnny Reb. Do we have anything else? Well, fortunately, I've killed two of our units, so yeah, we're done letting you move stuff for right now. Okay, um, that's fine. I don't think. I yeah, don't I think, think we're. I, I would. I would think. I mean, we're done. I mean. I didn't want to move Cook and Hunting because I want them to have a better thing. I would have the same ideas for Holmes and Kershaw, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we got a few orange units that could recover to be healthy. Um, they're going to go exhausted, though, aren't they? They are going to be exhausted, yeah. Who's that? Everybody on the board. Cavalry stays but exhausted. Better better exhausted in fatigue zero than exhausted in fatigue one. Right. Okay. Todd how Steven do you, right there. How do you not right. how do you not go exhausted? By you only going to you one don't or two. Go to three. Yeah. Okay. Got it. That helps. Okay. All right. All right so good. let's uh well let's do I'm gonna stop it here, but let's do the um let's do um so did, we're passing everyone's done? We're done. Okay, so, so now let's do recovery phase. And is that is now we got recover all units during normal, so it's still normal weather. Yes, yeah, you'll hit the sunshine recover button up there. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, you're gonna let me do it this time? <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Look at all that exhaustion. We're uh, tired. We just fought all day and you made us run around at night. All right, save it right there, Todd. DR oh, Jones they says, build. ain't no thing, I'm fine. They built, yep. uh, you're right, they did. Well, so this, Basil does that automatically, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. What do they do automatically? They a one Yes, that's what Pat, yeah, Patrick was saying, they do that. Why is it only, how come McCun didn't A1? Because um, he had a, uh, he had one fatigue. Oh. Okay, so M1 did... Or maybe even two. Yeah. Uh, who, who are you talking about, Jeff? McCunn down there at Fairfax Station, the blue unit. Oh, no, yeah, he had uh, something on him. He had green or something. Okay, so that's cool. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think we're... we're I'm, I'm done for tonight, so... Then we okay, can... yeah, but before we before oh. we walk away from this, let's di let's discuss what we... If while we've got Patrick on here with us, okay. So just in your experience of playing, uh, where do you think maybe we missed on this first turn, or something we we might have missed on this first turn? What's well, interesting to watch is you guys were uh, you became self aware about the usage of the cavalry, cavalry in this one because at nighttime, even though they can be threatened. Um, they get the bonus on combat if they decide to stand, but they also get that plus two. So if you had put them here to help screen, if you if the union really wanted to get McDowell moving, they could really sap some of that movement, which already sucks. Um, or, you know, so that that's always a potential. Um, I think it's normal for Johnston to try to flank around down here. Um, if with really good rolls, he could even get down here and potentially set up a flank on Fairfax Station. That's always possible. Um, yeah, you just, unfortunately, you got some some middling rolls up here to get these guys, and they all failed their extended march rolls. So this flank doesn't help you very much unless you're really going to try to press them, but you, you didn't make enough ground in time. So on turn two, it's just, it's not worth it unless you're going to try to really race and get all the way up here and try to cut them off somehow. Um, but no, I think you, yeah, everything was fine. You guys did, you did, uh, you really got some good movement here to get uh, Johnson around doing that. 
So I think, um, um, and that's that, that's what I was saying that back at the beginning is like when you play opposed, you don't you obviously don't know what's in the opponent's mind. So at some point, the Confederates will be like, "Well, hell with taking victory point spots. I'm going to just try to wail on some of these weak Union units that are left behind." So there's that's a possibility to get some points too. But at some point, they've got to get one one or more of these victory point locations because there's just yeah. there's too many points on the table with that. Right. I mean, yeah, that, that it's you have to go for at least one of these towns. I think not. not. It's not going to happen tomorrow during the rain, more than likely. So we need to have everybody prepped for that third day. Mm -hmm. so, all right. So rain is slowing us down in movement. So the, all the little thin black ones are one and a half. The pikes are no, one. they're two. No, they're two. They're pikes two. are one and a half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So does that mean railroad unfinished railroad is also two? Two. Uh-huh. Okay. Shame all those units were blown out back here. Bartow, B, Evans. Of course, you know, Barto, I mean Barto and B were pretty much wrecked on July twenty first. And Evans was he Evans was all over the battlefield on the 21st because he was a far the most northern unit cook was another one because cook had to fill in when evan shifted cook was the only close unit that could shift to fill and then of course yule and well we know where Elsie came from but yule and early yule and early were over in here uh jackson as well and they all you figure they all shifted i mean yule and early shifted back through the junction up through i guess the chin ridge area and then came in on the right side of the tack that came down from Sudley, Sudley Springs. And that's what threw the Union for a loop. And, of course, all the Union, instead of instead of all the Union forces running back this way to get out, they all decided to go across the Stone Bridge. This, this was the only unfortunate, unfortunate part of tonight was that McConnell, you know, that, that, that could have gone a lot better. Or Johnston, right. but it happens, you know. Yeah, that, yeah our doc, Todd and I are we are notorious for rotten die rules at the rottenest times. But I think everybody that plays war games has that instance at times. Oh yeah, we should start a club. <laughs> well, Patrick, man, that, that, that's awesome, dude. You get on here, we appreciate that, man, and, and we hope that we can drag and torture you into some more of this. <laughs> Well, I yeah, I look forward to turn two just to <laughs> for the Schadenfreude of watching these mud march. Great. Well, we have uh, we have this thing where when Todd and I decide we're going to do something, Todd's got it. He looks at his calendar to see when he's got us. It's easy for me. I'm a bachelor, so I whenever I can do whenever. But uh, we we he tries to find us a time. I think we've only got Todd of all those dates you sent me the other day. We've only filled one for Clay on what we say the twenty was it the twentieth. Or 30th. He's the 30th of May. He's a ways away. Of May. That's a long ways away. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll, I'll look at those again and see what's going on. Yeah. Figure out when we can hit this up again. Because we, we we decided last night we're not going to wait a month and a half. No, but, we're going to. Yeah, we need to get it. Because it's just too much There's too much fun. But there there are a lot of rules. I mean, that it's just little, little chrome stuff and things to, to remember. And just as I was been looking at this, I'm like, yeah, there's... That, what's so great is that again, it's like, what's so great about this system. There's so much variability there. When night will hit, um, you know, like that could that took us a while to get there. Usually we get those. I don't know. I don't know. It's just cool. I'm just now like he was talking about maybe it trying is... to move out. <laughs> Go ahead. Yep. No, I'm just thinking like you're saying moving cavalry maybe a little earlier, but I didn't want to risk not getting the main units stuck behind the. <laughs> rivers but i kind of forgot the bridges and stuff are still good so i, I was really worried about yeah. this ford but so those little runs right there like flat lick and silk lick all, all or elk click those are all going to be you're not going to cross those little things either tomorrow or just the you can cross them on the road but you can't go over land okay you can't go over the creek like you did and the fords are going to be flooded on the main rivers there yeah right interesting God, more to think about when we get into this. Well, so much of this series, 
is the heart wants what the heart wants and and time and again you're like i want to do this and like when you guys were kind of going uh you wanted to move connell down here and just get in the way it's like well i want to do that but then the rules tell me oh there's a there's a penalty for that right so right. so much of this is the little alarm bells going off like wait a minute what happens if i try to do that oh yeah i can't yeah that would be bad yeah so that's yeah, how you I mean, this game it works your your train of thought that's for sure it really does yeah i mean yeah i guess one of the things i'm thinking about is like you're i forget i mean i'm so i don't know why i just i think of that red line of the railroad really kind of restricts my vision like i don't look beyond it like south of it oh i noticed you, even when you when you moved stewart you went uh you went up around here i'm like you know you could just cut right through there but at that point forget it he's rolling you know so yeah i i missed them i missed that railroad more times than not it was just like oh yeah i could save myself a lot by just following that railroad yeah because it's unfinished yeah and, and just like the the even the southern one too is like you know you can move down here through brimstone you know if you have the movement points but around like you're saying who knows what you might <laughs> if you get yeah roll, well at some point they, they yeah, a, a, a sneaky Johnston can be very, very you know, wascally and try to get down here. And if they get a couple of really good movement rolls, suddenly the Union is scrambling because yeah, you know, Springfield I, is threatened or Annandale. Well, I also noticed, too, that in so far in all these scenarios, I didn't look at this one here, but cavalry can't capture objectives. They cannot, correct. That's right. Well, who can't, what's that? Cavalry. Only can. infantry can capture. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, I'm right, good stuff, guys. I mean, let me turn the camera back on. I guess I never want to see my pretty oh, face yeah. before I go to bed. So, <laughs> uh, again, Patrick, thanks so much for popping on. Hey, yeah, I mean, when we when we figure out a date, we'll send it to you if you can get on. Great, if you want to or not, whatever. But, um, or it was great having you in the chat too, if that's all you can do. But I think I think uh, uh, what's your name, Jeff? Jeff and I were talking about maybe getting you on here, and we can just kind of. Maybe a little bit more chat, maybe a different approach, and not you. So it's not really the game thing, or maybe the game thing's good, and we can just talk while we're going. Because I, I, I was telling Jeff last night, I was like, so many people know you. You've done so much video. It's like I don't want to just say like, when did you start playing? What do you? So I was just trying to think of different things we could talk to you about because I feel like you've covered that in a lot of things. So sure, sure. And our I, our viewers are yeah. This would be more of us picking his brain. Maybe talking the history or something. Maybe get McMurray on here too. That might be good too because he's he knows this stuff. So okay. Cool. Hey, thanks, Patrick. Cool. And appreciate it. It was Thank a good Sunday. Much. Thanks to all the viewers we had. As usual, check out all the channels on here. Definitely go check out Patrick's channel. He's 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 got a ton of vids, but all these guys have videos. So go do it. Everyone have a great week. And uh, Jeff and I'll get on here again, play in about three or four months. All right. See you yep. later. <laughs> thanks, all. See you all right, all. Yeah. Bye.